डॉक्टर शैलजा यू हैव टू टॉक्स ड्यूरिंग लास्ट टू डेज एट सी एस आई यू हैव अ टॉक ऑन स्टार्टिंग्स टू ऑल डायबिटिक्स सो कैन यू प्लीज थ्रो सम लाइट्स ऑन दिस वॉट एग्जैक्टली यू मीन टू से या एक्चुअली इट्स ग्रीटिंग्स फ्रॉम द कोची एंड सी एस आई टू थाउजेंड सिक्सटीन एंड आई एम हैप्पी टू हियर शेयर माई थाट्स अबाउट इट वॉज वेरी गुड डिस्कशन अबाउट स्टार्टिंग्स टू ऑल डायबिटिक्स बिकॉज सम गाइडलाइन सम एसोसिएशन से दैट सम पेशेंट्स मे नॉट रिसीव स्टार्टिंग्स so there was a big uh, discussion about it and the session went on very well mm -hmm. my take is that i agree with professor didwania that mm -hmm. yes statins to all diabetics is a must especially from this part of the world where we see type 2 diabetes from india mm -hmm. thin fat more liver fat mm -hmm. more resistance but more beta cell dysfunction also mm -hmm. rapidly de deteriorates this diabetes mm -hmm. and with very high cv risk mm -hmm. so all risk engines which calculate cardiovascular risk in type mm -hmm. 2 diabetes actually mm -hmm. underestimates the risk so this high cv risk population of type 2 diabetes i think everyone should receive a statin mm -hmm. even people who are below 40 like 35 34 years old they show so much of high cv risk and they are going mm -hmm. to progress in 5 10 years right. so they should receive statin so, so overall yes everyone should receive statin right. and what's the recommendation is it moderate intensity or high intensity that statin? depends on the risk mm -hmm. if it is uh, usually all are between moderate to high risk all type right. 2 diabetics for cardiovascular right so at least moderate intensity statin is a must right there are some trials where the good statin was not used and the mm -hmm. trial was negative mm -hmm. so and in high risk of course high dose statin right problem in type 2 diabetic in india or anywhere is mm -hmm. basically low hdl and high tg right so only statins are not sufficient mm -hmm. and the residual risk which we see in type 2 diabetic patients mm -hmm. for cardiovascular mortality and events is much higher mm -hmm. compared to non diabetics even after use of statin right so what else mm -hmm. so we need something some treatment modalities which is over and above statins mm -hmm. at present low hdl high tg that is the subgroup consistently showed benefits with fibrate addition right though some guidelines do not say Mm -hmm. I still feel that in this is a reasonable choice to add fibrate right. to a statin right. in this group of individuals. Right. Remnant non-fasting mm -hmm. cholesterols mm -hmm. is a sign of non-HDL. It goes parallel with non-HDL. Mm -hmm. Goes parallel with postprandial state. Mm -hmm. It correlates with the CV risk as well as the inflammation right. of atherosclerosis. Right. So we need something which will reduce this risk. Right. So fibrates. Right. Ezetimib has shown uh, promising results in the diabetic subgroup right. when it was added to the statin so in right. some patients yes right. and we need definitely everything which will reduce risk over and above statin so right. statins are a must of course over and above we need lot of other things whatever is possible yeah. is a must in type 2 diabetes considering the higher tg levels in the indian population yes. Yes. so might be fibrate and be when a... we say this subgroup mm -hmm. if you see all the literature it mm -hmm. is high tg means more than 207 and low hdl is below 35 so right. it's not like 400 tg right. so this group will benefit with the use of fibrate plus statin right so okay and uh, which are the group you can look for adding azetimib ultimately actually it is for further cholesterol reduction right that way we do not see very high ldl cholesterols in type 2 diabetics right usually we do not see very high but right. those who are really high statin intolerance and right. those who cannot uh, tolerate very high intensity statin there plus if you want further reduction in few cases it right. can be used so in acute coronary syndromes it showed good results right of course so the recommendation would be statins should be given to, to all, all diabetics yes. for the pleiotropic yes. benefits mostly yes. the statin uh, great uh, you had another talk on uh, oral hypoglycemic agents and the cardiovascular risk yes you spoke on dpp4 inhibitors sgl2 inhibitors and glp1 agonist yes. so okay. what's your overall overall comment on this Okay if we talk about DPP4 inhibitors mm -hmm. these are the molecules which showed a lot of promise right. to decrease atherosclerotic risk like glitazones which right. we know so DPP4 activity somehow it is related to cardiovascular risk through mm -hmm. different peptides mm -hmm. also DPP4 activity is increase in heart failure so uh, initially it was thought but mm -hmm. at present if you ask me the summary mm -hmm. all DPP4 inhibitors are safe mm -hmm. to use in high cv risk patient Right. They do not increase the risk. At the same time, they do not. They are not cardio protective at present. All right. CVOT trials do not show superiority. Right. They just show that cardiovascular mortality and events are not increased with DPP4 inhibitors. Right. So they are safe. 
CVOT trials are used in the high CV risk patient. If mm. you use these drugs earlier in the course of disease, the right. result may be slightly different. Right. The issue with DPP-4 inhibitors was the saver timi trial which showed unexpected increase in the heart failures. Right. And from there the discussion of heart failure and diabetes increased. I say the knowledge and the understanding of diabetes improved mm -hmm. with these trials. Mm -hmm. Alogliptin did not show slight increase in number, citagliptin mm -hmm. did not show at all. Right. So whether these are intrinsic differences between the molecule mm -hmm. or whether it was different trials, different kind of uh, adjudication right. or different reasons like more pyagliptazone in succagliptin now we do not know. Right. But at present in practice if it is class 3, 4 heart failure, I try to avoid succagliptin right. or maybe maybe DPP for any right. better. But citagliptin is safe to use in any high risk patient. Yeah, yeah. So, if I just cut you here and ask you, what's your preference in your practice? Is it bildagliptin oh. or citagliptin? We use everything because mm. patients need all. DPP4 right. inhibitors are great molecules right. to add to metformin right. and they are very safe. And with these new things coming of decrease in albuminuria, which is right. shared by all DPP-4 inhibitors, right. I personally feel they have a lot of pleiotropic effects, which mm. is not independent of their glucose lowering effect. Right. So definitely they are very good molecules to use with metformin. Right. What about the SGLD2 inhibitors? Recently, empagliptrozine got the FDA approval also for that. Cardiovascular, cardiovascular first okay, anti-diabetic yes, yes, drug, yes. so I think everyone is celebrating. Absolutely, yeah. I think you must have heard about Empareg and Empareg right, right, outcome for right. someone else also. Mm -hmm. But empagliflozin has proved beyond doubt that right. decrease in cardiovascular mortality, overall mortality, right. reduction in the risk of MI, mm -hmm. the number is less. Mm -hmm. And if you see number needed to treat to right. prevent one death is just very little, 26 or something right. compared to 35 of uh, Ramipril. Right. And now patients are on statin plus ACE inhibitor. So, right. this number says everything. Right. And I think it is shared by other SGLT2 inhibitors also. Mm. The DAPA will come with its uh, declared results. Mm. CANA will come with CANVAS. Right. It will give another insight because right. in canagliflozin they have used right from the earlier days of diabetes. So, this is a great promise and right. I think the combination is great, SGLT2 right. inhibitors and DPP4 inhibitors. Right, right. Looking at CV safety, CV risk reduction right. and different anti-diabetic effect. Right. So and I think what's your good. comment on the GLP-1 agonist? GLP-1 agonist are yeah. again a drugs. Right. Uh, interestingly, GLP-1 agonist again three molecules showed different. Short acting lixacinatide was safe in high CV risk patient. Right. Uh, liraglutide actually showed reduction in cardiovascular right. mortality, yes. semaglutide showed reduction right. and GLP-1 analog did not show increase in heart failure. So they were safe even with prior heart failures. Right. So that way they are CV safe plus right. actually they are protective. We can say they are cardiovascular protective. Right. So do you see being an injectable option of GLP-1 agonist, is it becoming popular in the country? What, what do you see in future? It is getting accepted quite a lot mm -hmm. and the future looks very good. Mm -hmm. The once a week drugs right. are working wonderfully, right. uh, the tolerability profile is good, right. the short acting lixacinatide has a fantastic reduction in postprandials, liraglutide right. has a great effect on the weight and plus cardiovascular benefits. Right. I think they are slowly getting accepted so by maybe doctors as well as yes, patients. Yes. So maybe it is a controversial question but I would ask you, so do you think the future of GLP-1 agonist may, uh, can it uh, replace insulin use in the diabetes? No, it will add. It will add. So, the combinations are already in the, they are coming, Idegluride right. is coming and even uh, Glargine and uh, Lexacinatide. The combinations will be a new uh, a new drug. Breakthrough, yeah, 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 absolutely. So, thank you. Uh, uh, if I ask you just to summarize in two sentences about your overall uh, talk on OHA and CBRSQ. I think this year CSI was a great uh, yeah. experience. The overall scientific sessions and uh, other things, these kind of studios, yeah. everything went on very well. Uh, we enjoyed quiz and uh, lots of interactive things in right. the CSI, right. lot of diabetes in CSI, so right. we were happy. Right. Uh, the whole overall scientific sessions were really good. Right. Yes. So, thank you Dr. Kale. What exactly you mean to say? Yeah, actually uh, it is uh, greetings from the Kochi and CSI 2016 and I am happy to hear share my thoughts about uh, it was very good.